No, no, what are you doing? Stop this, man. You lost your mind, bro? Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. Drop the gun! And fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. We're excited to welcome a new trainer to FPD, Mike Seeklander. He's a great trainer and a very accomplished competitive shooter. Now in this episode, it's pulled right from the headlines. This was a real shooting that happened inside a gun store. Difficult one. Take a look. These force-on-force -force scenarios use training guns that fire non-lethal projectiles. My name is Luke. Uh, I'm from the Syracuse, New York area. I work in commercial construction, uh, doing estimating, planning. I got into firearms from hunting from uncles and, and aunts, and it's a fun hobby that's led into uh, ways to protect my family or myself if need be. I haven't had a lot of training, um, so I'm working and in getting into more, and I came down here for this opportunity, and that's kind of the extent of my training. I have done martial arts training. Yeah, Luke, Luke is a, uh, I hate to label him as an average guy, but he's a very likable average guy. But it stood out to me that he said he's had basically zero training at this point in time. As a full-time professional trainer, I'm an advocate of training. I, I very strongly support it. I'm also a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. I understand that it gives individuals the right to carry. But boy, if you're gonna carry a firearm for self-defense purposes, you absolutely have to address training. It, it would be like giving a teenager a car and not taking the time to teach them how to drive and then expecting yourself to get on the road with a bunch of teenagers that hadn't had any training. I have not set up my holster rig yet. I usually carry off body because that's where I'm at in my stage of, of learning right now. I haven't gotten something that's, you know, I'm round. I'm not as round as I used to be, so we're working on that, <laughs> making changes. So Luke talked about his, his carry method, it's off body, and he addressed that was where, he, he said, that's where I am right now in my level of training. Luke also mentioned he's a martial artist, which he understands physical contact but I'm not sure if he understands what's gonna happen to the gun in the middle of that fight, you know, if it's not secured to his body in some way, shape, or form. I'm not, I'm not sure what to expect. You've done a very good job of not letting out what I'm gonna be doing, so I think you're gonna kinda throw me into something that could happen. So the scenario is actually one that, that, that occurred in the past, a very unique and interesting scenario in a gun store where you have an open carrying individual walk in and the store owner or a clerk tells him, hey, uh, you know, we don't allow handling the firearms, you gotta go take it outside, you gotta unload it or whatever else. And, and the, in essence, this guy snaps and walks toward the door or just outside the door and decides he's gonna fire around and then enters the store and starts shooting people, literally random people, and then basically hunts from position to position in office to office, killing people in the store which is, uh, it, that's an extremely scary situation that, you know, a fellow gun owner would walk into a store and do something like that. So it's a real scenario uh, and very, very scary in an environment where there's lots of guns and in theory, lots of armed people. This is awesome. What is it? What is this? Uh... Uh, so this is a Chris, Christensen rifle in 338 Lapua. Luke is shopping for some new guns. Will Luke survive and save the gun shop, or will he falter? Uh, it's based off of a Remington 700 action. Okay, so um, I can take this up to like uh, Africa or Alaska or? Um, it, long range target shooting. Oh, yeah. um, okay. I guess you could use it. Well, long, so it like the long I would get a better, like a 34. You need to buy, like, you need to buy extra, like maybe three yeah. or four extra. that would be handy. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. That little, oh. Dude, those little lights are yeah. great. Yeah. Of course, I always need gun oil, but like seriously, like the mags and everything. You wanna, you wanna make sure you're getting the right one. Well, like so the one got, that I've. Yeah, it's the same one. Yeah, you've got to have the same one. Different than that one. But 
So, is that, is that excuse a, me, you sir. The same one. Excuse me, sir. Can you please reholster that firearm uh, or I go outside? I'm just and checking out the magazine. Okay. Yeah, you just want to make sure he's got they, the right one for the gun. And, yeah. and I understand that. Can you go outside and and uh, and just unload it before you do that, please? Yeah. Hey, man, that happens yeah, all the time in here. Like, he carries it all the time. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, everybody assumes. I, I would know, assume I'm right. pretty trained up. Like I'm fairly like certain that it's. Anyway. It's all, man, man. Uh, you know, if you were looking for something else, they yeah. definitely have. Dude, stop, man. What are you doing? Don't, don't. don't. What are you doing? Stop this, man. You lost your mind, bro? Stop. Oh. Holy crap. Everybody, My brother just lost everybody. his damn mind. Got a phone? Man, I don't know what's wrong with him, dude. Uh, yeah. I'll call I'll call the cops. 911. Ah. Uh. Yeah, well, there's there's uh, been a shooting. Oh. Um, we're here in uh in Covington at this gun oh. shop. Yeah, y'all need to send somebody right now. Oh. Who are you, man? I'm just a shopper. They said they're on their way. Ryan! Are you two actually together? That's that's my brother, man. I don't know what, what happened to him. Did, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Put your hands back out. Man, Did you what actually happened? call 911? You started shooting. Don't call 911. Index. Index, index, index. Yeah, how you yeah. feeling? What do you think? How you feeling? Uh, I mean, I feel adrenaline, right? Uh, right. So how, how do you think that went down? What, tell me about what happened. Um, gentleman came in and they were doing something over here and the gentleman behind the counter said, asked them to stop doing whatever it was that they were doing. And then they were appearing to, to leave, I guess. And then something happened behind, behind me or to my left. I heard shots fired and I assumed it was him because he was the only one I saw with a gun out. So to expand just a little bit on the scenario, to give you a little bit more detail that you probably mentally can't process or remember right now, the individual you shot was in fact the bad guy. I believe you got hit at one, yep, one time? Yeah, I got hit twice. You got hit here, twice, here. boom, boom, okay. Uh, when you got hit, do you remember where you were when you got hit? Were you still standing was, or were you behind? I was the... kneeling. When you got to this position, your, your mobility was to an extent limited, but you were kind of dancing around back and forth and engaged him on the right-hand side, I believe. Tell me about what happened after you know. Okay, I definitively hit him. He's on the ground. Uh, did, did you see where the gun went? And um, tell me about your decision-making process at that point in time. I saw him go down and I saw the pistol on the floor. It didn't seem like he was too eager to reach for that or yeah. to go any further. His brother was over there. Yeah, and then you, you stayed there. Tell me why you decided to stay there and what, what, were you, what was going through your mind at that point um, in time? Ryan was still up over there. They, I knew they were together, I, and he said his brother just went crazy, but you know, crazy runs in the family, so I don't know what, what he's gonna do. Is he gonna be a bad guy? Is he gonna say, you know, that was my brother, and then come after me? So I didn't want to totally be off guard from that perspective. Do you think that this rack and those guns are cover? More concealment. I, I felt like it was hard for me to see him, and I thought it was be hard for him to see me as well. Certainly, uh, probably in this particular case where you were, maybe one of your only options, and I assume that's probably why you picked that position. Right. When you got hit, did you feel it? I sure did. Uh, did you react to that? Yes, because I think I fell over because I think that would have been my... You did. Yeah, I your mind said, I just got shot, I need to go down. Right. Yeah, but then I said, you know, I can't just lie here. Right. So how did I go down? I mean, it was shot here and here. I imagine it would hurt a lot, but you know, adrenaline kicks in after a second, and right. yeah. I'll bleed out later. Yeah, hey, good job, man. <laughs> heart, your heart slowing down a little bit? A little bit. Good. If you carry a light, you need it to be bright and you need it to be dependable. Surefire makes great lights. One of my favorites is the Stiletto. It's flat, it's rechargeable, and it's super bright. Check out Surefire Lights. So, you know, one of the things that we always talk about before we talk about, you know, gear or, you know, defensive techniques is that good old 
awareness and avoidance, awareness and avoidance. We talk about it all the time. It's not something that people put into play often, you know, that, and, and they do it less often than they should. If they did it more often, they'd be in a lot less fights and bad situations. You got a guy, the store owner said, hey, sir, put the, put the firearm back in the holster, that he had actually taken his gun out and he was playing with magazines and doing whatever else. So at a minimum, he's that idiot on the range that you want to be aware of and avoid if you possibly can. So at that point it's in time, time to go. I might have been like, okay, this, this, who is this knucklehead? You know, I, I have no interest in being around this guy that's going to pull their, their gun out in the middle of the store. They're just, they're, they should not be in this store. So yeah. now I'm hyper aware of that. And I would probably have positioned myself at that point in time Man, I'm aware of this, what this guy does the entire time. Who is he? What's he doing? Where's he going? So that's the right. first thing. And that may have allowed you to get some information, like, oh, wow, this guy's walking through the door. He just pulled his gun back out. At that point in time, my spider sense is going, hey, why is this guy pulling his gun back out? Has he right. agitated the store owner, right? And the store owner's right there. I'm going to get out of this fight entirely and start looking for options and positions I can go to or whatever else. First screw up was awareness, right? Yes. So here, here, I want to show you the timing of this whole deal. So what I want you to do is I want you to step up at the counter, right? Yeah. Now in this case, uh, dude had been talked to and he goes to exit the door. But this case, we're going to change you from being unaware to being pretty darn aware and checking this guy out, right? But go ahead and let, he just pulled a gun out. What do you get? Let's go to our position of cover. Yeah. Start to get your gun out. Go, go ahead and uh, roll player. You can keep walking about the same speed you did all the other stuff. Boom, you're getting your gun out, okay? Get this! Do you see how much more time you have to watch what he does, make a decision as he fires the first shot? He, so he's going to simulate your, he shoots a person, you know right away, he just shot a dude. Right. You're in a good position to cover, engage, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. am yeah. I shooting? Yeah, yeah shoot him, <laughs> hell, have fun with it, there we go. There you go. So now I'm gonna give you a, a better position to go to. Instead of going here and being tied here, Yep. We're going to go from our position of awareness to this dude just pulled a gun out. So we're getting low and we're hidden down here, right? Get low, get low, get low, get low. So you're low. Okay, boom. Draw. Okay, get that gun out. Good. Two handed grip. Grab it. Stay low, stay low. There you go. And then you see it. Yeah, react. There you go. Boom. Good. Good shots. So in here, I want you to think about utilizing the, the edge of the wall as your position to cover. And what I want to do when I build this position is I want to, I want to have, be as tight as I possibly can. I'm going to tuck the elbow. So if I'm using cover to the left, Luke, yep. I'm always tucking that left elbow and I'm keeping as much of my body behind the cover as possible. And I've compressed the gun. If I see what I need to and decide to fire, I'm going to extend my handgun and build that same upper body triangle, but I'm just rotating my body over. Now from here, you're just you're staying here. Now if there was an exit, you'd go. If there right. was another door to get in, like if this door was open, we'd get in the vault or something secure, we'd go. But if not, this is where you are right now until he gets in position. And we're gonna keep nice, tight position, watch it, letting your vision lead, your vision's already searching, and he, as he comes across here, let's say he starts shooting, the second you see him, extend and, and fire, okay? okay? All right, bad guy, you're moving. So I'm waiting for him to come to me, right? Yep, yeah, keep that shoulder tucked. Keep the gun in there. Extend the gun and fire. See the sights. There you go. That's it. That's your position. Do I would I wait for him to to walk this way and yeah. just wait for him to come into my shot? Yeah, great question. Or... So, so what I'm seeing visually is my gun is out of my vision and I'm as tucked as I can be and I'm just waiting for movement. And the second you see him, that leading shoulder or whatever else then you're making a decision. That's him, he still has the gun, extend the gun, aim it, and fire. Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily be looking for him. No. I'm gonna let that fight come to exactly. you. Exactly, let the fight come to you. Don't move, just stay there. Because we don't, we don't really wanna get in a two-way gun battle with this guy, we can, we can do it. And right. the second you see him, if he's still armed, and you've already made that decision, because he's, he's shot one, two, three, or four, or five people, boom, let him have it. The Ruger LCP Max is one of the newest from Ruger, and it's amazing. It's an LCP, but it holds 10 rounds of 380 ACP. Great for carry, great for pocket carry, whatever you need, the Ruger LCP Max. So we've talked about shooting from behind cover, and I want to give you some specific tips to shooting behind cover. So I'm going to step over to this edge, and one of the things that I want to tell you first is, uh, if you're rolling your body around cover to the right, for example, my right foot is going to be forward. 
if I'm rolling around cover to the left, my left foot is gonna be forward. Because think about this, if I'm rolling my body to the right, my body weight is to the right. So I need to counterbalance with shifting my lower body foot position. So think, think about that as step number one. Number two, I want you to consider the position itself. When we normally shoot our handgun, we shoot from that good two-handed, what we call upper body triangle. Whenever I rotate the gun around cover, I wanna maintain that triangle. And I don't wanna change the arm orientation because if I change the arm orientation, I change the pressure on the handgun. I change how it recoils and recovers. And our goal around a position to cover is to be able to shoot as fast and as accurate as we can in a flat footed position, okay? So I wanna show you this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and get my right foot forward. I'm gonna get behind the leading edge of this wall and I'm gonna show you the difference between leaning and rolling. So for example, if I tuck the elbow and I lean out into position and fire my shots, you're gonna see a lot of exposure from the right side of my body. If, however, I keep the foot in the exact same position, and in this case, I'm gonna tuck the elbow, and I'm gonna roll my body into position, this naturally ro rotates the triangle slightly, keeps the elbow and most of my shoulder behind cover, and exposes enough of the sights and handgun for me to fire my shot. So there's a lot more cover when you're rolling versus leaning. Last tip for you, when you're working around cover, keep the handgun back and out of your vision and tuck the elbow. So if I'm searching in this room, the, the handgun is low and just basically out of my vision where I can see what I need to see before I roll out there and fire shots if I were to see a threat, okay? So in summary, make sure your foot position is proper. If you're rolling to the right, have that right foot forward. To the left, left foot forward. Maintain your upper body triangle and keep the gun out of your vision. Search with your eyes when you find the threat, roll out, build your shooting position, and take your shots. You know Crimson Trace for lasers, but they also make optics and a lot of different red dot options. Stuff for your AR, also micro compacts for your micro compact pistol. Optics from Crimson Trace, check them out. First Person Defender, brought to you by Springfield Armory, GunTalkTV.com, and Ruger. Luke finds himself looking for more gear. Can he put his newfound skills to the test when approached by multiple assailants? That's something. Can I help you guys? Oh, just looking, just looking. All right, no problem. Do you have one of these? Do you, do you like them? I do not have uh, one of these rifles uh, currently. I have a Remington 700 platform, but uh, it's, uh, it's not this hey, particular rifle. You, you got a second? I've been to that factory before. I want everything in the register. On your knees, on your knees. Get on your knees, on your knees. Sit down, we were taking, what do you got? What do you got? Get the good stuff, get, man. And get only the good stuff, that's all we need. All right, all right, get, I want those, I want those handguns, I want those. I'm gonna get everything. I'm get getting everything. everything. Get everything. Yeah, yeah. Get everything. I don't move, don't hey, move. I told you not to move. I, don't move. All right, don't hey, give me what's in the register. Give me what's in the register. All right. All right. Faster. Come all right. on. All right. All right. Faster. All right. Be a hero. All right. Faster. Oh. Oh. I'm hit bad, man. I'm hit bad. I'm out of here. Nine one one. All right. Index. Index. What happened? You were in the store, you're shopping again. Tell us Tell us what happened. Um, I was talking to the gentleman and I saw two people over here asking about ammo or something and then whoever was closest to me draw. I moved and I kind of crouched down over to here. As I got over to this corner here, I looked and I didn't see anybody's attention on me. I saw KJ was focused on the teller, so then I moved into the next area there where it gave me time. In there, you you draw your handgun? Yep. At that time, I didn't realize there was two until I 
peered around the corner to see what kind of what was going on, and then I saw there was two, and then I figured there was no way out after that. Who fired a gun first? Who fired a remember? gun first? I heard it. I don't think I saw it. Okay. I, I heard it. Now, did, was that your indicator that you decided to, okay, if they're shooting people, I'm gonna get into this or yeah. not? Yeah, I see Ryan and he has a pistol that's down, so I know he's not aware of me. It seemed like the other guy was busy with the teller over there. Okay. And you shot who first? Did you shoot the person at the door first? Yes, as I came around again, I saw KJ. I shot at him a couple of times. Uh, Ryan, if you, if you had to do it all over again, it should based on what you know now, would you change anything? Would you go to a different position? Would you move different? Would you? Would I change? I guess I would wait for somebody to come to me. I mean, I know, and I know we talked about that, and it sounds weird that I didn't do that. But I mean, if you don't take that stance, who will? Right. I mean, how long is it going to take anybody to get here? Maybe. Yeah. Don't so, disagree with that. You know, it felt like there was nothing stopping them from coming for me. Sure, right. So, so you decided to get into the fight. Right. If you know you might be in a situation where you put good tactics to use and you're in a position where now you have to save some lives and utilize that handgun, your skill is going to come into play, right? So don't wait till that situation happens to have the skill you need to stop those two bad guys. Start training now you and make it. it a daily habit. Okay, great you job. Got it. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching First Person Defender. Did you know there are more ways to follow what Gun Talk's doing? Like GunTalk.com, GunDealio.com, the Gun Talk Podcasts, and the Gun Talk email newsletter. Follow us, interact with us. Thanks for watching.